vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mark
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gilcomston this Wednesday lunchtime. Uh, those of you who have been here before and are on the ball will realize that I am not Jerry. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a member here at Gilcomston, and uh, Jerry has asked me to help out uh, with some of the relaunch services. So depending on how I get on today, you may or may not see me back here in the future. But it's nice to be here, and uh, I welcome you uh, to our time of uh, brief fellowship together this Wednesday lunchtime. Uh, those of you who've been here in recent weeks uh, will know that we've been reading in the Bible from the book of Judges, and we've been reading about uh, Samson. Uh, as Jerry has said previously, Judges was a very messy time in the life of the people of Israel. Uh, the people kept messing up, and God kept pulling them out of their mess and out of the hole that they'd managed to get themselves into. And so we've been reading this for our encouragement and for our instruction given the mess that we can sometimes find ourselves in, uh, in the course of our lives. And so uh, we've been reading about uh, the different judges that God has raised up to lead the people, and most recently looking at uh, Samson. So we've read about his miraculous birth. We've read about him being set apart uh, for the service of God. We've read about the supernatural strength that was given to him. But we've also seen that Samson was a pretty flawed individual. Um, he was the leader of the people of Israel, but time and time again, he kept messing up. He kept making mistakes. He would go to the wrong places. Uh, he would hang out with the wrong people. Uh, he would do the wrong things. Uh, and so this culminated really in what we read about and heard about last week uh, in terms of his ill-advised relationship with Delilah and him ultimately spilling the beans to her about the source of his supernatural strength, uh, which ultimately, uh, having spilled the beans, caused him to be captured uh, by the Philistines, as in his arrogance and in his presumption, uh, the Lord left him, and the strength that he had come to rely on was no longer part of his experience. So we left last week on a bit of a cliffhanger, if you will, uh, and as Jerry kind of wrapped up last week, he, he talked about as we think of the sort of besetting sin and the regular pattern of mistakes that Samson made, he encouraged each of us to recognize our own weaknesses, uh, how we have a tendency uh, to perhaps put ourselves in situations where we would know we won't be at our best or where perhaps we will stumble or fall. And he encouraged us to rely on God, to not to presume upon God, but to rely on him and to lean on him. And ultimately, he said, we need to read to the end of the story. And so that's what we're going to do today in terms of catching up with where we left off with Samson uh, and see what happens next. And the kind of banner under which we're thinking about Samson today is in the context of renewing our strength. So we read in Judges chapter 16 at verse 21 that not only is Samson seized by the Philistines, and they bind him because he's now no longer got the strength with which with, with he can resist them. But they also gouge out his eyes. So he is blind and he is weak and he is bound. And if that wasn't bad enough, we then go on to read in verse 25 that the Philistines decide to have a tremendous party to celebrate the fact that they have captured the leader of God's people. They've captured Samson, who is powerless. And in this big celebration event, they drag Samson out to parade him as a spectacle, to mock him and have him perform for their entertainment. So he's really at absolute rock bottom. He's physically weak. He's blind. He can't see a way out of his situation. He is being mocked by those who are around him. He has no none of his own people with him. He is completely isolated amongst his enemies and at absolute rock bottom. And at different points in our life, we can find ourselves at rock bottom uh, because of decisions we've made, because of things that we've done, or just because of the way things have played out. Uh, we can find ourselves in a situation where we feel as though our strength has left us. We can feel as though we haven't got a friend in the world. We can feel as though we are blind and can't see a way out of our situation. 
uh, we may know, as Samson did, the scorn and rejection of others. And so we need to find a way of, in these situations, of, of relaunching, of starting again, of renewing our strength. So let's turn to the passage today to see what happened next and what lessons we can take from Samson when he was at rock bottom. And I think the words of the passage should appear on the screen for us. So we're in Judges chapter 16, and I'm going to read verses 28 to 30. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he, Samson, killed many more when he died than when he lived. So the first lesson I would want to draw out from the passage is that Samson turned to the Lord. We might say Samson finally turned to the Lord, because as we've seen in previous weeks, uh, this is a man who was intent on seeing things with his own eyes and following his own path, rather than actually living under the instruction of the Lord. But here now, at rock bottom, we read, he prays, sovereign Lord, remember me, please God, strengthen me. Samson was no longer presuming upon, upon his own strength. He was no longer assuming that he could get himself out of the situation. Rather, he acknowledges the sovereign Lord, the one true God, the one great king. And he calls out to him, remember me. Remember that I was set apart from birth for your service. Remember that I was called to be the leader of your people. Hear the shameful cries of the Philistines as they mock me and by implication Mock you, Lord, and for the sake of your name, for the sake of your sovereignty, strengthen me, renew my strength that I might be used by you. So this is the first thing really for us to acknowledge, is that when we're at rock bottom, the thing to do is to turn to the Lord. And, and why wouldn't we? We've been made by him in his image. We've been made for his service. He is the sovereign Lord and wants nothing more than for us to walk with him so that he can use us and bless us in his service. And so not only does uh, Samson turn to the Lord, but he does so and sees what we also need to know from this passage, that God is able to do more than we are able to see or to ask or to think. Samson, in his uh, prayer, says he wants revenge for his two eyes. So while he was wise enough to turn to the Lord and to recognize his need in his current situation and to recognize that the Lord was the source of his strength, he was perhaps still not grasping that this wasn't entirely about Samson. This was about God's work. This was about what God wanted to achieve through Samson and with him. It wasn't just about revenge for Samson's two eyes. It was about God acting to achieve his purposes and involving Samson, using him in those. And again, we should be encouraged by this. We don't need to see or grasp or understand the full picture of what God is doing. We just need to be willing to be available to serve him. We just need to be prepared to say, Lord, I'm turning to you. I'm trusting in you. Help me to see what it is that you would have me do in your service. And through that, we will be able to see that he is able to do more than we're able to ask or think. Because what God achieved was a victory for his people beyond anything that Samson could have envisaged himself. Indeed, we read and read in the passage that Samson killed more of the enemies of God's people in his final mortal act than at any time while he lived. Indeed, if we'd read verse 27, we would have read that the temple in which Samson was located was crowded with men and women, and all the rulers of the Philistine people were there. On the roof, there were about 3,000 men and women. 
Samson didn't just get revenge for the loss of his sight. In one fell swoop, he was the instrument of God's victory over the Philistines, and he took out their entire leadership in doing so. Far more than Samson was able to ask or think, and that is the God that we are able to serve. Even when we're at rock bottom, perhaps particularly when we're at rock bottom, we need to turn to him and say, yes, Lord, I want you in my life, I want to walk with you and be of service to you. And we can be confident in making that prayer because of what Christ and what he has done for us. Because this is the last point I'd want to draw to your attention, is do you see the pale shadow of the cross of Christ in what Samson does in his final mortal act? His arms outstretched to the left and the right, holding on to the pillars and in and that motion pushing down the pillars to bring about the victory of God. Samson, a flawed, weak individual in and of himself, but able to be used by God to bring about the death and victory of the, over the Philistines. Compare him with our Lord Jesus, the flawless son of God, who chose of his own free will and volition to go to the cross to pay the penalty for our sins so that we can now have a relationship with the sovereign Lord, with the one true God, who offers all those who call on him and believe in him new life, forgiveness of sins, no matter your circumstances, no matter how rock bottom things may appear to you. We read in Luke's gospel of the account of the crucifixion that there were two criminals who were crucified with Christ, one on his left and one on his right. And one mocks him. He continues, if you like, the pattern of his life that's brought him to this end point on a cross outside the city. And he's full of hate and bitterness and anger. He doesn't turn to the Lord, but continues on the path that's brought him to this very point at the end of his existence. But the other one recognizes his situation and turns to the sovereign Lord. He sees Jesus for who he is and calls out to him from his rock bottom situation and says Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus responds truly I tell you today that you will be with me in paradise everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved no matter how rock bottom your situation may be so our reflections for today are to think about turning to the Lord in the different situations and circumstances in which we find ourselves, because he is able to do more than anything that we are able to ask or think because of what he has already accomplished for us in his victory over sin and death through Christ on the cross. That's the God that we worship. That's the God we want people to know. And that's the God who sees us in our mess and who wants nothing more than to pick us up and to help us on our way that we can walk with him renew our strength, and serve him in our everyday life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for these reflections that we can take from your word. We thank you for the simple truth of them, that, Lord, no matter our situation or circumstance, you would have us turn to you, and that you are for us and are able to do for us more than we are able to ask or think and that you have proved that that to us and given us your assurance in and through what you have achieved for us in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you and bless you uh, today for your goodness towards us. We pray that you would be with each one of us here and those who are listening online in whatever circumstances or situation we find ourselves in, no matter how close to rock bottom they may feel. Help us, Lord, to turn to you and to go on with you, to walk humbly with you, and that you would use us each day to further your glory. We ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for listening just now so attentively. Uh, I believe there's still a few more uh, sandwiches left, so if anybody's not had their fill, please uh, take advantage of the opportunity uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.